We're in Midtown Tampa. We're at Sally Mar. This place is badass. Let's go see my boy, Chef Jonathan Rodriguez. So I've been in this career for 18 years, man. Um, throughout the 18 years that I've been here, um, it's just, it's been a roller coaster, uh, for sure. Started in uh, Hilton in New York, um, you know, came out of school and got myself into a kitchen, was a dishwasher. And uh, I remember like peeking through and watching like how the kitchen was just rolling with the chef. And um, I was like, wow, man, like, you know, there's a lot going on in there. And, you know, dealing, dealing with, the, with the rash yelling and the, uh, the getting the food out. And I was like over here sweeping and mopping. And I'm like, man, I was like, I was just going around the corner. I was just like, the chef was like, Jonathan, get the hell out of there. Get the hell out of there. And I was like, no, man. I was like, what are you doing? Go get the garbage. I was like, all right, I'll go get the garbage. So I started doing my task quicker, right? And then, uh, uh, anyway, so it was really uh, that one day that uh, the chef, he didn't have anybody on the line, right? And he was like, he was like really stressed out. He was about to close like the restaurant for the day. And, and I was like, hey chef, I, I know how to cook. And he looked at me, he laughed. He was like, then there's no way, you're a, you're a dish boy. I said, no chef, I know how to cook. And he was like, I've watched every single person through the whole time I've been here, just put me on the line. And he's like, all right, fine. He threw me on the line and I did a whole like 300 covers with this guy. Um, it was beautiful. It was me, another guy and the chef at the time. And I knew right there and then I was like, that was it. That was an impact for me. I was like the whole symphony of me getting the food out, you know, and that's when I really excelled, you know, throughout my career, you know, I went from there you know, working with him, he was my mentor, and I became all the way to a sous chef position with him at the Hilton. And then he was like, listen, you gotta go and keep pushing yourself, progress yourself to get to the next level, because here, you're not taking my job. <laughs> so I said, okay. So I came in and I applied for Florida Embassy Suites, um, which was uh, a big change for me, because I went from a franchise to a corporate, and worked there, and um, I tell you, my, my life just changed there. Um, you know, got to excel and left. Um, and said, you know, it was definitely a different atmosphere. Florida was really hot. And I said, oh my gosh, you got a city boy in Florida. And uh, you know, what am I gonna do here? Uh, grew very fast in the business um, and hold so many different positions, man. I went from that property to uh, a um, Holiday Inn banquet chef uh, in Disney Springs. And then I became an operational sous chef for Swan and Dolphin. And that was probably my most favorite job, man. There was Shoeless, there was Garden Grove, there was Amelino Totoria, there was Blue Zoo, there was VIP, and it was like, that was like the job. And that's when I knew I was like, man, I'm doing it. This is it, I'm taking off from here. Um, then, uh, you know, just working with uh, Chef Robert Sarvowski, which was one of my mentors um, as well for the Swan and Dolphin, and, you know, listening to how he was and how he, you know, he was really interactive, really grew me to say, you know what, I really want to learn the Michelin, you know? So I got to stage in two great Michelin restaurants. And when I came back, my whole Chef Inspired was just completely on the map and I knew I had a goal and I knew I had a structure of where I want to be. And I just pumped myself, went to Opal Sands, became a property sous chef, made the, uh, the restaurant there at the time very successful. And I just was hungry more, right? And went, kept pushing myself, became an executive chef for uh, the Trumps in New York and uh, oversaw one of their Westchester campus and became a private chef for chef uh, for Eric, uh, Eric Trump and uh, Laura Trump was a beautiful thing uh, when they just started, you know, had a baby Luke. Um, and that was like when I knew I was like, oh my God, I feel like my career is impactful, you know, and just moving. And um, I said, but you know what, you know, life hits and, um, you know, we miss our family and we wanted to come back to Florida. And I, all the great things I've learned, I just really wanted to really feel, um, you know, feel what I've accomplished, but give it back to where I, you know, 
really grew. And Florida, I grew in Florida, man. Majority of my experience was just so enhanced in Florida. I said, you know what, I'm not gonna stop here. I went to Embassy Suites for uh, white lodging um, and we got high as GOP. And that's when I knew I was like, listen, I need to get to that next level. So what I did was is that uh, I just learned the beverage element and the food element to get to that next level. And here I am at Sally Mar and for the Marriott executive chef and food and beverage director. And I can't even believe where I'm at today. And it's like, it's happened so fast in such a short period of time that, you know, being where I am now, it's like, what's next, right? How am I gonna get to the next level? And my next level is literally like to be a regional VP. That's what I want. I wanna be that executive. I wanna be that, that senior vice president of food and beverage. I wanna be that guy that, you know, I can share down and trickle down to my team and show them what it is to be growth and successful and learn, you know, with each and every person that wants to be a part of the food and beverage world. And you know, this is where I'm at today and I'm just so proud to be where I'm at. And the Schulte family is where I, you know, I am and where I see my future and in, in the rest of my career. This segment of Walking Talk is brought to you by Don Pablo, coffee growers and roasters. They call me Don Pablo, and 20 years ago, I discovered my passion for great quality coffee. Today, we're roasting excellent quality coffee that's rich, smooth, and very complex. It's a taste that's new in the world. Hi, my name is George LaRosa, and I'm the bar and lounge manager here at Salimar. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make a few of our signature cocktails. We're gonna start off with the basil and the watermelon caipirinha. So to start off, we throw three or four lime wedges, two pieces of watermelon, two basil leaves, two spoonfuls of sugar. When you have everything in the tin, you muddle. Just lightly pushing everything because you don't want it to be sour. So it's just to really break everything in there. We then put two ounces of cachaça. So it's a Brazilian sugar cane rum. Close it and shake. And this one, we just do a dirty dump. drink is made to have everything just floating in there. And there you have it, the watermelon basil caipirinha. So now for our next drink, for all you bourbon lovers out there, old fashioned, we have a drink called the Andalusia um, Old Fashioned. So it's uh, our spinach twist on a classic old fashioned. So you start off with some ice. Now the difference that we do here is that we use brandy and rye whiskey for our old fashioned. So you put one ounce of brandy, one ounce of rye whiskey, then do a quarter ounce of our cinnamon infused simple syrup. We do like three dashes of angustia bitters. Grab our stirring spoon. Then you grab your orange. Just express all that over the glass. Wipe it, twirl it, drop it in there. Final touch, it's a cinnamon stick. The Andalusia Old Fashioned. So now for our next drink, we're gonna do something called La Siesta. So it's a drink that uh, we created here with passion fruit, rum haven, which is coconut rum made with coconut water and lime juice. It's very simple, very easy. It's called La Siesta because passion fruit is said to relax you, make you drowsy, go to sleep. So in Spain, La Siesta is the time you rest for after lunch. So we start off with an ounce and a half of Rumhaven. 
three quarters lime juice. Then we do a little drop of passion fruit puree. And then to give it that nice little foamy texture, we use fee foam instead of egg whites for all the people who don't like eggs or raw stuff in their drinks. Do a nice, generous dash in there. And then shake. Garnish it with a nice orchid. And here you have it, La Siesta. This segment of Walking Talk is brought to you by Farm Fresh Produce. All right, so this week we are in Midtown Tampa. We're with a very dear friend of mine. Um, we are with the chef, Jonathan Rodriguez. How you doing, chef? Doing good, thank you. Um, thanks for having us come out today. Uh, this is a beautiful property. This is a new property. Um, tell, me, tell me something. Uh, where, does your, what, where does your family come from? What is your heritage? So my heritage is beautiful. I got um, definitely a split. I have um, Puerto Rico and I have Italian. And it's, you know, more of a Northern Italian style. Um, and you know, we have both of the best worlds, they say, because we have that beautiful culture of that Latin flavor and that Latin uh, uh, seasonings, you know, and then you got your enhanced Italians that you got, you know, the, the heavy lasagnas and the pastas and the meatballs. So those are, those are my, my two beautiful cultures. How does your heritage affect your cooking style? My heritage affects my cooking style is pretty much impact uh, because of the fact is that prior to seeing my parents, you know, cooking and um, how they influence, uh, you know, their seasonings, they really like cross utilize each other's styles. So for example, like I would eat like a beautiful pork chop and then put it in pasta. You know, so they would really like mesh them and marry them. So it was good to see that growing up. And, and I say that that's today now, it's like, it's pretty easy to influence both cultures. Your family is unique, and therefore you must have a favorite dish to eat, a favorite cuisine. What is it, and how does that affect what your favorite cuisine to cook is? So that's a that's a pretty good one. Um, for me, you know, it. I just love food. Period. Right. Um, the gravitate for now, like what I really go to, is you know. I would say Spanish would be my favorite cuisine. Uh, the reason why is because Spanish, you have a lot of different impact flavors. Um, you know, it's something that you can really feel for every dish that you take a bite. I feel like the seasonings are empowering uh, versus when you're having like a spaghetti marinara. It's just, it's the same consistency for a spaghetti marinara versus when you're eating like a roco nabichuela with some bening and it, the whole flavor just, in, just enlightens your mouth. So I would say definitely Spanish is probably like my favorite cuisine. Let's talk about your role here at Sally Mar. What are you doing here on property? So my specific role here, I'm the executive chef and food and beverage director. I'm here to give the one of the best experience for a, a rooftop property. Uh, here at Sally Mar, we not only have wonderful Latin style cuisines, but we also have a beautiful event space that we can host your next wedding. We are also on top of a hotel, which I also oversee, which is Element by Western and the Aloft by Marriott. Favorite drink right now? Come on now, the number one drink in the world, the old fashioned. Chef, how did your family influence the way you run your kitchen? So the way my family helped me run my kitchen, I would say that realistically, they, they were really on the point of uh, structure. They were very big about structure and organization was the key. You know, my dad was a retired military. Um, my mom was a retired nurse. 
uh, you know, they both worked very much so, uh, but they were very organized, they were very structured. And, you know, the way that our household was, was, you know, on that effect, uh, it was always like a routine, you know, from from the day that I was probably a baby all the way till now. To this day, I go to my mother and my father's house and it's such a routine, you know? So, so that upbringing, it prepared you to lead people. In what way did that form? So it prepared me to be more organized, more structured. And I would say the loving in my family is what made me feel more loving towards my team. And it really empowered that for me because I didn't want to look at my team as just workers. I wanted my team to feel really like, you know, more of a fun in the workplace. And, you know, I, that's what brought my upbringing. It really made me feel like, you know, I really had a good childhood. And, you know, I thank my parents for that very much so and it provisioned me to not only be a, a good son to them to but also just try to be the best leader for my family at work what's the best piece of advice ever given to you so the best piece of advice that's ever been given to me has been from my dad um my dad has uh been he's been there for a while and um he's uh Sorry. He's he's just a hard worker. He was a hard worker, and um, he really did what he was supposed to do, and you know, for our family. And um, it just, you know, the both. He's always told me, you know, um, at one time in, in my career, I didn't feel like I was going to be successful. And uh, you know, my dad, he pulled me to the side. He says, uh, you know, don't stop what you're doing. You know, um, go at it because I believe in you and um, I think you're going to be very successful. And, um, you know, I love you as my son and I want growth to come out of you because I know that that's what you're about. And uh, it was it was something that I just never forgot. And um, that was my fuel. You know, it came from my dad and, you know, who, who what son doesn't want to make their father proud. Right. And. Um, I'm just so blessed to be where I'm at today. You know, I'm with a very loving team. Uh, I've gotten to to be able to be at this caliber. And, you know, if it would have been for my dad to pull me to the side and say, don't quit, um, I don't think I'd be who I am. Chef, you're a dear friend. And, you know, I, I sincerely appre appreciate your candidness. Um, I feel like what you, I le legitimately feel that what you share now with this will influence culinarians coming up because that's beautiful and thank you. We're going to go in the kitchen. You're going to show off your skill set. We're going to have a great time today. Thank you. Thank you. Hi guys, my name is Isabel. I'm the food and beverage manager here at Sally Mar. Um, I just wanted to give you a little rundown on our restaurant. We are here located in Midtown Tampa. We are a Tulum inspired Latin infused restaurant. And we just got in a brand new chef, Chef Jonathan Rodriguez. And he has flipped our entire menu and we would love for you guys to come out and join us. This segment of Walking Talk is brought to you by Peninsula Food Service. All right, 
hey, chef, everything smells terrific. Um, I heard all the, uh, all the action back there when you were cooking. Can't wait to see the footage. This looks awesome. Tell us what you have. So what we got over here is our paparenas. Um, what it is, is is a fried potato. Mm -hmm. uh, inside is uh, pork, beef, and tomatoes condensed cooked down. And on the bottom of it, we have a remoulade, but for to keep it Latin, we did what is called a mayo quechua with garlic, salt, pepper, a little bit of uh, cilantro, uh, mayonnaise, and of course, ketchup. And then we finished with some beautiful coarse salts and a little bit of a uh, micro cilantro. Mm. Don't wait for me, keep going. <laughs> oh, the next one that we have over here. Sure. So for everybody out there, this is a time where I make a mess out of myself. Chef, people are gonna listen to you. They wanna see when they come here, what is actually on the menu. These are brand new menu items. Go for it, what do we have here? So over here we have the mussels, the PEI mussels, Prince Edward Island mussels. Uh, what we did was that we cooked it down with uh, garlic, salt, pepper, white wine. Uh, then we finished it off with some fresh pico we do in house and chimichurri that we do as well. Uh, let it simmer and then we hit it with butter, sauce it, and then we put it and complement it with a nice crostini bread. Uh, and then on this side we have the risotto, a uh, little nice cross Italian versus uh, Latin uh, for the for the for the people that love both cultures, right? Uh, we have the risotto is an um, ambrello risotto. We cook it and make it with saffron, Spanish saffron. Then we have the flavors for fresh uh, shrimp, fresh scallops, uh, also fresh pea uh, mussels as well. And what makes it Latin is the chorizo that we go in and we cook it and we saute it with. And then of course, finish it with what? Machango cheese. And then of course, we have the Salimar uh, Chuleta Con Con. For us, our Chuleta Con Con makes us unique because of the fact that our cut is specifies just for us. Uh, it's a 22 ounce uh, pork chop. And on the outer side has a beautiful chicharron that we go in and score and give it that mohawk uh, look. And then we take it, we put it in the fryer. The pork chop is sous vide at 151 degrees. And then we just finish it in the fryer for the color. And what plate is not lying without the tostones, right? And we give the tostones and also with the remoulade. So, <clears throat> did you just call me a chicharron? That I did. Okay. Good stuff, chef. This is fantastic. Um, I mean, there's there's a lot of food here. We're gonna dive in. Um, tell everybody where we're at. So we're at right now at Sally Mar, um, the rooftop bar, the best in Midtown Tampa. We are located above the Aloft and the uh, Element property. We're in Midtown Tampa. Come see us, check us out. I have a mouthful of food. This is awesome. You guys are awesome, chef. Thank you. Man. Thank you. My pleasure. Cheers.